On December 2nd, the Pentagon unveiled the B-21 Raider after years of keeping its development a secret. It's the U.S.'s first new bomber aircraft in over 30 years. Retired Air Force Major General Douglas Rayburg is the executive vice president of the Air and Space Forces Association. He's also a former B-1 and B-2 bomber pilot. General, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mimi. So the, a lot of the capabilities of the plane are classified for obvious reasons, but what do we know about improvements over the B-2 bomber? Look at the uh, B-21, this new bomber that just was unveiled, as you mentioned, almost as the second generation of the stealth bomber fleet. Uh, this is not the B-2.1, but rather the B-21 representing the 21st century uh, modification and, and modernization of the bomber itself. It's radically different from the B-2. So what's the timeline? I, I know that it needs to be tested first before it gets out and, and operational. What are we looking at as far as time? I believe right now we're looking for first flight sometime in 2023, but for now, as you know, all good A model starting aircraft have to be ground tested thoroughly before they actually go execute on the first flight. So, And how does that compare to other airplanes that the Air Force has, has put out as far as timeline? I'd say generally that's about the same timeline. It's, it's key to understand that all new aircraft, you have to work through the bugs, as they always say, and especially for an aircraft that's been designed and built in the information age. Well, let's talk about that. Please. The, part of the um, development of this is open architecture. Tell me about that and what benefits that that gives, uh, that gives um, the Air Force. I think the easy analogy for the audience is it's, it's like a Tesla. So while it may be sitting in your garage, the, uh, the manufacturer is actually putting new information into the aircraft so that inside the aircraft, the, uh, the electronics, all the avionics, all the things are actually transforming to make sure that that one air aircraft takes off. It's taking off with the most modern softwares. That's what open system architecture alludes to. And it's also that modular piece so that when there's an upgrade, you can just upgrade that one piece and not have to upgrade everything with it. You've just alluded to, in my opinion, the most important part of the B-21. It's designed around the entire new modern team that can actually access the aircraft, uh, change as they see, and add things to the aircraft uh, that as weapons are modernized, as the aircraft, believe it or not, itself modernizes just the way it was for me as the commander of the B-2. We modernize constantly, even though the outside looked the same. You know, speaking of modernization, the, the B-21 carries conventional as well as nuclear bombs. And, and this is now the first time we're modernizing one leg of the triad. Any significance there? Yes. In fact, this is the great leap forward. And in fact, I think Secretary of Defense uh, uh, Lloyd Austin really pointed out this is how deterrence is done right. And that is the B-2 was built during the nuclear era, the Cold War and it really was designed around the nuclear mission. That's not the B-21. This is designed around being conventional as well as nuclear a deterrence platform. So in fact, it's multi-capable uh, and not just for weapons, but air, space, and cyber capabilities. And, and these planes obviously are gonna be very expensive to operate, to keep, uh, to sustain. Any thought given to, to the cost? I think the most important entry of the B-21, especially the acquisition process, which I commend the Air Force and Northrop Grumman uh, in what they've done is they adhere to cost, schedule, and performance. That's very important because uh, Changing the requirements also adds to the price of the aircraft. That's not the case with the B-21. This is a sterling acquisition uh, for the Air Force and for our nation. So what do we know about where the program will be based and any infrastructure and personnel that are required for this? Obviously, you're gonna need to train pilots and, and train all the people to, to sustain the aircraft. I think that's the next beautiful part of the modernization of the B-21. Uh, again, the Secretary of Defense alluded to this. It'll be mainly based uh, where former bomber or current bomber bases are, Rapid City, South Dakota, Ellsworth Air Force Base. Why? Uh, because that's where the infrastructure for the bomber will, will be, 
uh, both the classified preparation maintenance of the aircraft, the fuel, the weapons, and let's keep in mind, this aircraft is designed global. Strike any target, anywhere, hold every target at risk. I have more to add. Speaking of global, let's talk about Chinese capabilities. How does this stack up against the, the Chinese? Uh, compared to the Chinese, they do not have a comparison. I will say that when this aircraft is fielded, and we should field more of them, uh, it will be designed differently from the B-2 as a mission aircraft. Uh, the B-2, our mission was to, as we always said, kick the, the doors down and kill targets. I know that sounds a little harsh, but the B-21, in my opinion, is designed to kick the door down, go inside, and be a menace. And is this now going to be deterrence like we, we need for the Chinese? That's correct, because the aircraft is not only going to insert itself, but it will also be a, a communication platform for all domain command and control. When I say all domain, air, land, sea, space. It will also be uh, dealing with unmanned systems. You call them drones. Uh, they will also be working with, communicating with, not only the B-21, but the entire strike packages that may be forthcoming. All right, well, we'll see what happens next year when this gets in, into the air and, and year. operational. Thank you so much, Doug, nice to talk to you. Thank you, Mimi. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.